Hi guys, I'm Greg here from Greg's Restorations. Going over our latest project is the 1979 Porsche 928 from the film Risky Business for the Shea Family. Porsche, there is no substitute. As you can see by the background, uh, I love vehicles, but the criteria for everything I own is what's the background, what's the story. So when my son notified me that uh, there was uh, another movie car available, uh, I needless to say was interested. And we went online and saw that uh, the 1979 928 Porsche from Risky Business was going to be made available at an auction house called Profiles in History in California. We decided that uh, it was something we're going to pursue. It was a very interesting time because we had the Back to the Future cars and we had an event on the day that the auction was going to be held. And I was making a presentation to approximately 100 teenage boys and girls who had never seen a DeLorean, let alone a DeLorean time machine. And uh, Patrick, of course, my partner, was there with me, and uh, he was off to the side following the auction. Our presentation ends, the kids had a great time. Did we or did we not buy the car? So Patrick came over, shoulders were kind of shirked, and said, ah, Dad, we didn't get it. And I said, all right, that is life, that's what happens. And then he said, yes, we did. So I said, well, you son of a gun, you did it again. Then the next thing was the uh, cost of the vehicle. And this is one where we were going purely on the, the fact that this was the car from the movie. And how do we know that? It's called documentation. One of the previous owners had a lust for the car from the movie and he did a great deal of research. And in fact, he put together a paper which we have, and it was called The, the Hunt for RB928, Risky Business 928. And he actually went out to California, talked to the producer or the director, who provided him with script information, provided him with details that unquestionably verified that the car that he was looking for still existed. And uh, he actually hired a private detective or a private investigator who was able to access registry information and found the car. So having the registration number, vehicle ID number, and now he knew where the car was, he continued the hunt for RB 928. So he goes out to California, finds the guy, the vehicle is sitting next to his house, not running, in fairly dilapidated condition. He approaches the owner who says, why would you want this car? And he says, well, I've always wanted a 928. He did not reveal the information he had, and guess what? The guy had no idea that it was a car from the movie. He bought it as a used Porsche, average condition, hardly running, car broke down, he left it in his yard, and um, he literally had no idea it was a car from the movie. So he sold it at a very modest price. We did a lot of online research and determined that in the movie they had used three or four Porsches uh, of different vintages. And we certainly did not want the one that ended up in Lake Michigan. For those of you who saw the movie Risky Business, uh, you know, one of the Porsches uh, ends up uh, going for a swim, and the most iconic line from the movie is, which one of you is the U-boat commander? All right, everybody, watch your feet. Who's the U-boat commander? I don't advise to show it to your eight or nine-year-old children, but uh, it's, uh, well, it's called risky business, and it is rather risque. One very funny scene in the movie is after the chase with Guido the Killer Pimp, Rebecca DeMornay, Tom Cruise, and Curtis Armstrong sitting in the back of the car pulled to a stop after being chased by Guido the Killer Pimp. And uh, Tom Cruise, of course, looks over at them and says, Portia, there is no substitute. Portia, there is no substitute. 
and uh, that was Porsche's tagline at the time, so that's what made it really, really funny. Paramount literally sent a letter to, to Porsche North America, was asked if they would allow move cars to, to be borrowed, and Porsche North America wrote back and said that they had viewed the script and they didn't feel that it was appropriate for their customers, so that's when they had to go out and find uh, a few different vehicles. And they actually had a 79, and I think there was an 80 and an 81. The one that went in the drink was uh, a car that they supposedly had leased. That's the story. It was leased, gutted, went in the drink, and then they actually put it back together and sent it back to the lease company. I don't know if that's an urban legend or if that's a fact, but that's what I've heard. German cars, this was a luxury GT. This is an expensive car back in the day. It was the fastest production car in 1979. This car is um, uh, typical German engineering. It's like they took a, a piece of billet aluminum and carved a car out of it. It's just so solid and um, such a high quality vehicle and it's extremely comfortable and it's a long distance cruiser. It's not a sports car per se, it's a long distance cruiser. It's a fantastic car. Oh, nice Couple of boys in daddy's car. <laughs> Florida. Hey, come on, Wearing pussy. Hit it. Uh, this car specifically that uh, we own was used for a majority of the driving scenes uh, in the film, including the iconic chase with Guido and a killer pimp and scene when Tom Cruise was doing donuts in the parking lot with it. Basically every scene except for the very beginning when they are backing it out of the garage for the first time and he stalls it. Funny fact that I've learned through the research that was done by our friend Lewis Anderson who was the one who found the car. Uh, he told me that that car was actually an automatic and they had to dub in the, the sounds of it stalling and all that. And the, another fun fact is that it wasn't actually Tom Cruise driving it, it was his roommate at the time, Sean Penn. We've been contacted on a couple of occasions by the Peterson Automotive Museum in LA, which is of course a world-class facility, had asked us about bringing the car and putting it on display there. And we, we thought about it and thought about it and never really agreed with them to do it. But then when they contacted us about this special Porsche effect exhibit, which marks the 70th anniversary of Porsche, we couldn't say no. But when it came time for the car to go out there, we didn't want to send it out as it was. There was some uh, minor cosmetic issues that needed to be touched up. We couldn't think of any place better than to bring it to Greg's Restorations, and uh, Greg was able to get it dolled up, get its makeup on, and get it running well for us, so uh, we're very happy about that. This project entailed of reconditioning of the interior, new paint and refurbished wheels, and electrical and mechanical maintenance. It's uh, currently at the Peterson Museum of Transportation in Los Angeles. We were very happy to put it there. Uh, Patrick and his fiance Nikki went out to uh, the grand opening. Several famous individuals were there, one of whom was Chad McQueen, Steve McQueen's son. Chad said, can I sit in the car? Imagine that. And is a permanent fixture as part of my collection. Greg, it's always a pleasure. You're my man. I know. Uh, we've, we've gone a long way together.